<laughs> what does it mean to be a queer person for me is just being able to express myself in not only psychologically but also physically and energetically. Can we do that again? Yeah. I'm, yeah. What it means to me to be a queer person is just to be free, to be liberated. Identifying that this is not something wrong, the same way that you've been told, I have been told uh, my whole life. In the way our society operates, you know, the gender expectations towards uh, men and boys, I think once you're realizing uh, that those are, you know, fully socially constructed and to a huge extent arbitrary, I think at that point I was able to detach myself from this picture. Being you know, assigned female at birth. Uh, it was it was very much like, it wasn't a choice. It was something that was just expected of me, something that was kind of imposed upon me. And after I began my transition, after I started like feeling more comfortable in my gender identity and my queer maleness, as opposed to my queer femaleness, which I'd kind of been occupying before that, it's a lot more space for me to kind of explore what I want and what I kind of, it's, it's more comfortable for me. It's, it's definitely a more comfortable space. I don't feel restricted by societal telling me what a man should be. To understand myself much more and not feeling that I have to behave in a certain way for other people to digest me. Identifying as a queer man has just broadened my capacity to live and to live like a way that I can, you know, thrive. The really interesting thing about talking about the queer identity and the queer body is that a lot of queer people grow up isolated. Whether that's where they come from, whether that's their family unit, or the society that they just grow up in. And they definitely have this underlying feeling of loneliness and not being understood. So for me, the body has always been the unit that I've like, clung to because we all have a body. That's like the one thing we can all say for ourselves is that we have a body. Like the more mainstream gay movement, there does tend to be a, a huge emphasis upon like white, cis, able-bodied, like skinny twinks, which is obviously not ideal. The body standards within the queer community, those things end up being carried from what's expected in a society in a broad sense. There is a big pressure on people in general to just look at certain way and it's systemic as well and it's all political behind because we have this only two ways of being uh, humans which is male and female and as soon as a kid is born it's just presumed that this kid will be straight and will live this straight life. At the, at the start of every Pokemon game you kind of get this question where it's like this professor guy and he's like, oh yes, this is a Pokemon and this is, they're like animals and friends in this world and uh, you're going to start your Pokemon journey and uh, first I need to ask you, are you a boy or are you a girl? And it's, it's kind of clunky. <laughs> Pretty much everyone is being raised on like a popular culture that is largely created and distributed for heteronormative cis people. Given those implications, it's not possible for an individual to immediately detach themselves from all this culture and all of those expectations to us what a man should be like. Whenever I was playing these games and stuff when I was younger, I would always choose the boy avatar. And this was something that I'd always done and I never really thought about it. <laughs> I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't really something that it clicked for me yet. We live in this world of images, so the pressure is a lot harder for us because we not only need to succeed as, as, as queer people and also in this standard of uh, beauty as well. 
within the gay community, there is this fascination with being masculine, being muscular, and presenting in a particular way that is straight acting, straight passing. And I believe that to a very large extent, that is carried through beliefs and things that we are fed when we're younger. Because I was so insular, my body image became something that was really important to me. When I was younger, it was seen as this cute thing, like I was cute and chubby. But then overnight, it felt like all of a sudden, I was just this humongous monster. It was like this really vicious cycle where like, I was really deemed as the fat kid. I was not only black, I was queer, and I was one of the tallest in my class as well, and I was very skinny. I remember uh, wearing tracksuits underneath my jeans just to look slightly bit bigger than I was. That had a massive impact in my self-esteem and, and, and even in the way that I see myself and, and love myself. I had struggled to kind of feel like I fit in as a girl. Once I started going through puberty, I was kind of like, okay, well, this'll fix it, you know? Like, maybe the issue is that I'm not a woman yet, that I'm not old enough, that I'll, like, grow into it. And that didn't really happen for me. Understandably now, like, looking back, it's maybe obvious. Oh, my pretty baby. Oh, my sweetie baby. I just can't believe I'm yours. It was difficult not seeing myself in other people or being represented in television or in films or anything. So the impact was quite hard up until I had the opportunity to just understand these things and learn myself. I think a lot of people have heard like the, you know, the kind of classic transphobic jokes and stuff about like, oh, and then it turned out she was a man and it's, well, that's not, not super accurate. The more educated you become on yourself and the more you learn about yourself and the more you learn about how external factors really play into how you view yourself. Most of the time those external factors are completely inappropriate and are really damaging. But when you're young you don't know that and when you're young you don't understand that there's people like you. Na verdade, quando eu comecei a tirar fotos, foi uma forma de expressar os meus sentimentos. Nesse, nesse ambiente mais artístico e mais nu, eu acho que eu estou mais nu do que os modelos, porque eu estou expressando meu ponto de vista. I feel like when it comes to trans men, the experience is often more that we're just kind of erased in terms of the different like kind of men that there are to be. It's not really considered like super valid it's not really uh it's not really included in the uh the man canon if you will I think what really changed in comparison to who I was before and the way that I thought before was, first of all, I got just more mature. As the years passed, I started to feel more comfortable about myself. So when we talk about painting, when we talk about writing books or making music, I think there's, it's, it's a way broader spectrum of things that are being allowed and things that are being accepted and things that can be you know, successful within art or appreciated. But that's not quite, I think, with our, with our bodies, which I think is quite, is quite surprising. I view my body as something that is beautiful, artistic, and I can express something. Taking part in something where my body is celebrated was so incredibly lovely your body is yours, it tells a story, it tells an experience. There is quite an obvious masculinity to like how I present myself, how I like groom my body, how I present my body. And I think that kind of contrasts with like choosing 
to choosing to be like depicted and choosing to like explore this space with nature and flowers and this very kind of typical feminine imagery. I, th I think there's power there. I think it's, um, I don't know. I think it's radical. I think it's cool. Everyone has a body and everyone is a person in themselves. And I think everyone does deserve respect and everyone does deserve to feel beautiful in their own bodies. And I think it's harmful. I think it's ridiculous what expectations out there are and particularly within the, within the queer community. Up until I was 17, 18 years old, I was always trying to fit in and I was always trying to look like everybody else that was around me. And that made me very lost in that period. And I didn't know who I was. When I turned 19, I met this person, which really changed my life. That became my queer mother. We found a family there in that space and this person uh, opened their arms to us and wanted, wanted and did show us a completely different world where we could just be ourselves. And from that point, joining that house, being with that group of other queer people that think like me and that look like me, it really helped as well for me to just start my process of self-love and self-acceptance. There's no one way to be queer, to be trans, to be a man. If I'd had someone in my life who kind of modeled that for me, it would have saved me a lot of time. It would have saved me a lot of figuring stuff out before I could start down this journey to kind of becoming who I am now. I think we just need to embrace each other a whole lot more. I think we need to embrace that there are differences in everyone. Fashion is free and art is free and I am just a free spirit, I'm just a free person. And if I can tell now for all the queer kids out there from this to be truly themselves, uh, this is what being truly themselves looks like. I think the thing that's worth keeping in mind is that every human being deserves respect, dignity and equality regardless of where they're coming from or what kind of group they represent or what identity they have. People will praise you for the end. Hell is where we're all reaching. This class.